it, I feel like we're like finally through the winter, so I know. I've been feeling less depressed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's been super nice in New York too. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I've been hearing as well. Are you in the yeah. city? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Nice, nice. very nice. cool. Mm-hmm. Must have been tough this winter and during the past year i feel like we have a lot of friends in brooklyn who are just like there's nowhere to go (laughs) i know yeah and it's it's like there's nowhere to go but also like we shouldn't go anywhere and then it's just like it's a whole yeah it it was definitely tough especially because like originally i'm from chicago Mm -hmm. and not being able to like go home for the holidays was tough and and all that Mm -hmm. stuff so it's just like it was yeah yeah, it's it's been a year (laughs) Yeah. yeah, it has been For a year. Sure. It sure has. Um, but we made it this far. Uh huh. Yeah, and I got vaxxed yesterday. Yes, you did. Hell yeah. Nice. This is exciting. Yeah. So things are looking up, hopefully. For sure. And For we sure. still have basketball. Basketball still have, there. <laughs> we do have basketball. So, for better or for worse. Yeah, so I'll just I'll, I'll kick it off there. Um, welcome everyone to the Indie Basketball Podcast. And we do have Diet Sick here, Alex and Ella. Hey. What's up? so uh yeah again thank you guys for joining um it's uh it's it's been fun doing these little podcast type episodes and talk to musicians about basketball and and sports and 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 music in general too because obviously um but yeah thanks for joining and and i just wanted to uh to start off with we'll we'll talk a little music and then we can get into some of the the hoops but you guys are originally from new york as we were just talking about right yeah Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. And and so you went New York, you met in New Paltz. Is that where you guys kind of started yeah. playing together? Yeah, we met in New Paltz um, mm-hmm. and then lived there for a little bit and then moved to Brooklyn and lived there for a little bit. And now we ended up in Richmond, Virginia, where we've nice. been, I think, the longest out of those places at yeah. this point. Almost four yeah. years. I know. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, where, where were you guys at in Brooklyn? Uh, we were in Williamsburg and Bushwick. And then Bushwick. Yeah. yeah. And, but we lived in about like three or four places. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's typical. Like it's, a, it's rare to stay in the same place for like more than like a year or two tops. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Never signed any lease. It's all like sub subletting and stuff. Yeah, for sure. subletting a lot. So it was nice to like move to Richmond and be like, okay, we can like afford an apartment. Yeah. That, like, yeah, yeah. It's we like, don't share with like eight other people. <laughs> I know that's that's definitely where I'm at with with New York and Brooklyn in general. It's like it's so expensive. Yeah, yeah it's pricey for sure. Yeah, don't um, use that for yeah. sure. Um, but related, uh, the, with you guys being on here, uh, Noah, your first band was called Earl Boykins, right? Yes, it was. So perfect. <laughs> it's just like there's not a more perfect union right here. Yeah, I've been a basketball nerd for so long. You know, I had to have a band after the second shortest basketball player. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and uh, part of the reason I, I was kind of checking you guys out, too, is you were on the Rat Boys um, live stream for Halloween, yeah. uh, which is which is very fun. That was a super cool thing. And I actually did one of my posts was Rat Boykins which is like oh, yeah. yes oh my god I so saw serendipitous that. I like, ah! yeah i was like dang <laughs> if earl boykins the band had gotten on the radar you would i know have had to like make yeah. a funny name it just would have been <laughs> yeah it's it's the rare lineup where like uh earl boykins is like i don't have to change anything and then also my my last podcast guest was dikembe it's like i don't have to change anything for that oh <laughs> my god yeah so yeah That's exactly yeah <laughs> so yeah it's 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 uh it's it's a fun kind of crossover and, and happy to be doing it. Um, but music wise, what's I know we've kind of talked a little bit about the past year. What's it been like with you guys had an album come out like pretty early on in the pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah our May. album came out in May on May 1st. But like, you know, it comes out on May 1st. But the whole like cycle of press like is the months leading up to that. So it was like, you know, right when lockdown started, we had like just put out the first single and like mm-hmm. in our heads, we had this whole plan of like, mm-hmm. all this stuff we we're gonna do. And at first it was it was kind of okay, because we weren't going to be like on the road until the summer, like May and onward anyway. So at yeah. first we had like the hope of like, okay, yeah. we'll just like hang out at home while we promote it. And then we'll get to go tour it. Yeah, there's like, yeah. 
two weeks, you know, everything um, would take two weeks to. So I think up. there was like a moment of like, oh, this is actually okay. Like, mm-hmm. it's fun to just be home. And like, we're gonna, we already had plans to like be very online. Um, and so it was just like a little bit of a pivot until mm-hmm. it was like, oh God, you're not going on tour. <laughs> yeah. This is I know. a lot. Um, so I think that's been like the, the biggest, you know, sad part about releasing an album last year was that we wrote our songs on this album specifically because we were excited to play them live. Like yeah. we wrote them with the idea that we'd be playing them live with other um, musicians in the band, like a bass mm-hmm. player and a key keys player and like extra vocalists and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And we were like, these are really hard to play just the two of us on yeah. a live stream. <laughs> like we yeah. wrote these songs for the road. Um, yeah. So definitely made us pivot a lot. Yeah, definitely. I know it seems like, like, you know, touring for an album is like part of the major, like, like fun part of after you release an album. And, and it's, I'm yeah. sure it's been a little difficult of a pivot. Um, mm-hmm. But um, what I wanted to mention was, um, have you been making any additional music? Like since then? Have you been kind of as quarantine, I guess? made you want to write more or not like because some people have the adverse reaction you know right i feel like we haven't been writing as many like new songs but we are on patreon and so every month we record a cover for fun Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. so we've been you know recording lots of covers and kind of just like letting music be fun and just like um releasing the pressure of like writing the next album Mm -hmm. um because there's just i don't know i feel like the pandemic really had burnt us out a little bit like a lot of people like it's Mm -hmm. exhausting to live through this and then also like be creative like running on all cylinders Mm -hmm. um we've both really leaned into the classic like quarantine hobbies in a way yeah oh yeah Um, sourdough starters (laughs) yeah yeah um like noah got really into cycling yeah oh nice and yeah so yeah i guess like the music thing like we kind of took a little break maybe we were like let's actually like maybe just lead into that yeah and like be like just regular people for like a couple yeah yeah a little bit (laughs) for sure And you said that you do the Patreon stuff. So I've, I've noticed a lot of that. You're doing like prints and what else, what else do you have on your Patreon? We've got, so we do like a live stream hangout once a month. Like we mm. did the one for March last night and that was like a performance on Zoom. Um, sometimes cool. it's like trivia hanging out on Zoom. Like it's mm-hmm. different types of live hangouts. Um, there's recipes. We yeah. have a bunch of like guitar and drum playthrough videos up there. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we have you can get like know. stickers so there's like a level where you get the prints but then there's like a cheaper level where you get like a funky sticker every month and then an mm-hmm. enamel pin it's um, like merch discounts yeah stuff. there's a lot of it's, stuff it's on like, there we've just like piled yeah, up yeah. many things as we're we can like think of. this is our new job yeah <laughs> and it's been right. fun because it's like a lot more direct and intimate than social media because the people who are there like really are excited to engage like mm-hmm we get less people on a live stream because there's a smaller group but it's like so much more fun for us because it's like we know these people like our fans are becoming kind of like our friends and it's it's been a really cool way to like build our community yeah Yeah, i i saw um so with with all the prints did you go to school for design or anything no I'm, I'm, i'm a designer myself so i that's why i was wondering oh that's awesome no i did not go to school for design i Currently, when we're not doing band stuff, um, work at an art studio nonprofit here in Richmond. And so I started interning there in the beginning of 2019 and started learning like printmaking stuff like screen printing and riso printing. um, And then just kind of started learning like on YouTube and stuff how to design because I loved printmaking so much. And I was like, I just want to make stuff to print. Yeah um so yeah all youtube taught <laughs> yeah no just the way to do it especially like now and, and especially during like the past year you got nothing but time right <laughs> yeah totally yeah. totally um yeah. so that's been fun it's been fun to like merge that into the band stuff because you know we're doing this really cool our project we're working on right now is mm-hmm. a comic anthology um Ooh. For the album so we got 10 illustrators and comic artists and assigned each of them a song from our album and so they each could make whatever kind of comic they wanted inspired by that song and then i'm going to riso print 
a bound like book of all of them like an anthology and so it's kind of like the two worlds colliding like yeah. printmaking world and diet sig world get to like collab on this special thing so yeah I'm really excited about that that that's awesome i feel like honestly coming out of this a lot of the way people like release music and like what comes with it is going to change based on like kind of the things we've learned to do during this time alone oh really? i agree like i feel like we've become like like we can do like live sessions now we figured out how mm -hmm. to like mix things down and do video editing and all this stuff and i'm like honestly going into touring i'm like i don't know why we never live streamed live shows before yeah i'm like it seems so simple now it's like why can't you just like hook it up to the board at like a venue and just yeah. scream it and then charge tickets for those for the live totally because like yeah, some I, people can't go to shows anyway right like pandemic or not and like it would be cool to share mm -hmm. them all wider reach definitely yeah. yeah i i totally agree with that yeah i feel like live streaming is the the one thing that's going to come out of this like being way more frequent yeah, yeah. i agree Totally. And yeah, cool. I feel like this this time has kind of like taught us to lean into the stuff that we actually really enjoy and that like mm -hmm. like really like it's okay to like narrow into like your own lane of, of shit that brings you joy and like yeah. like printing and like bring it with diet sig like that's something like I just was like I love printing like mm -hmm. how can we just keep doing what we love and I think for us it just like allowed us to be like what do we like doing because everything is so stressful and we are mm -hmm. so lucky to have this like project that mm -hmm. we get to do whatever we want with it kind of and we're like yeah. how do we lean into the stuff we actually enjoy yeah so i feel like we've learned a lot of that definitely um i guess music wise outside of making and playing music is there any music you've been into lately any uh any new albums or anything Yes, let me uh, go to my, my Spotify. <laughs> Everyone's got their go-to list. I got my Spotify like two, 2021 releases like yeah. on unlock. Well, so another thing for Patreon we do is make a playlist every month for mm -hmm. them. That's fun. So it's kind of like just ends up being like all of the songs we've been listening to that month. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, what do you got on that? I will say, I like kind of hate to say it because he's kind of like, he's not like the best dude i think but i've been listening to a lot of drake in quarantine <laughs> like he some reason like his like sad boy deep cuts have been like really it's there for me yeah, um, yeah. And for sure love the new um rap boys album mm -hmm. so good and mm -hmm. what was that turnover record you were listening to that one came out in 2015 though oh <laughs> that wasn't hey, the one. it doesn't matter when yeah okay yeah i've Whatever honestly you've been into yeah, I haven't been keeping up with like a lot of new stuff. I've been in the like going for comfort and like listening to a lot yeah. of like older like '90s or like 2000s pop punk stuff and just kind of like I don't know a to lot be of honest, like people Sorry, people in general have been doing that with everything like movies like I don't want to watch like you know there's like all the movies that are up for Oscars this year that it's like I just want to watch no like idea. something that made me happy from years ago. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's how I feel too. I'm like it's like all Motion City soundtrack or like. <laughs> like promise ring or like home or something I'm like just give me something where i could just like completely just escape and i know what totally. it is you know i don't have to like learn about something new right now yeah a band i really like though was the retirement party um oh cool they are awesome and they i don't even know where they're from i see them on twitter a lot so like if you're listening <laughs> yeah. retirement party what's up huh. um but they're the kind of band that like their songs will pop up on my like discover thing right. and i'm like i always like stop and i'm like wait who's this, this? like i like this song um so i've been finding myself like really drawn into their stuff mm -hmm. awesome yeah for sure i've been i've been into the i know antlers just put out a new album this weekend and i've been like oh, wow. totally way into that right now i guess they did a, a visual album with it as well Whoa. oh it's cool. like very very like artsy cat skills like interpretive dance is at all of oh it oh my god i love yeah. that I'll have to check yeah. it out Dang. um but yeah so i guess uh switching into uh basketball uh portion uh cool. i know you said no you're, you're kind of a basketball fan alex do you do you like any basketball at all too or I really enjoy the cultural conversations that surround <laughs> basketball. I'm a really, I'm really big into like pop culture and like celebrity culture. And yeah. so I love how I feel like basketball really ties in. Like I love the Kardashians. Not, I think they're 
bad people. I think. Oh, sure, sure. But I love I love keeping up with them. And you know, the NBA, you know, like when Tristan and Chloe's drama was happening, I feel like that was a real peak of us being like, we have a lot to talk about here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I like watching with Noah because I, I feel like you have good commentary. So like I enjoy being like, yeah. what's the drama this week? Yeah. Um, Honestly, I, I've always actually I've always said that wrestling or <laughs> nba recently is like wrestling or reality television in a lot yeah. of ways because it's like so theatrical and, and you you tune in for not just like the game but like the personalities oh totally. yeah i definitely. feel like that's your whole thing yeah i i you will enjoy. say like i've never really been a big like team person like i have my teams but i just love players i get like sucked into like this yeah. one person and i'm like oh they happen to get traded or something like gary trent jr just got traded i love gary trent jr <laughs> now he's on the raptors but i'm like i'm still that's a fan a good trade, though. the raptors are cool so i think yeah, if i raptors had any love good. in my heart it would be for the raptors that's true yeah um but raptors that's... have a big a big following especially with people who tend to follow like the indie basketball account toronto has a huge like merging of this culture dude yeah. it's like all pup fans i feel yeah like. oh yeah <laughs> That's 100%. why I like them. We played a show we in there. Toronto with Pup, opening for Pup during the finals, like when they were the year that they won. What was that, 2019? Yeah. And like God. everyone was so hyped. Like, way to be, yeah, best time to be in Toronto was mm -hmm. during that like few days we were there. Oh my God. Just the camaraderie of yeah. it all. Like people side stage watching Pup's performance and like watching the game on their phone and being in it. And like, yeah. I was like, I'll die for this team. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I honestly feel like Stephen wearing uh, Raptors jerseys during performances became a thing. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, I yeah. He so. had his Gasol jersey and Siakam jersey and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. I yeah. should have wore my Blake Griffin jersey. <laughs> as yeah. as far as uh, as you were talking about Gary Trent Jr. As far as trades, yeah. I don't know. In the end, that uh, Toronto made out very well. I think we're looking at the yeah. the decline of the Toronto era. Yeah, it was a one and done situation. I'm sorry, Toronto fans, but yeah, yeah. Just I mean, it was one and done for Kawhi, so it's kind of one and done for everyone. Yeah, true. Where did Kawhi go? He went to the Clippers. Mm. Whatever. Which, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just like can't root for the Clippers. I no, just I can't. can't. I did when like it was like CP3 and DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin. Yeah. I was a huge Blake Griffin fan when he came for in. Sure. I still have this shirt. It's like falling apart you know? <laughs> but now he's a brooklyn boy he's with you now <laughs> he is he is and and it's funny too i saw something like his first basket with the nets was a dunk and he hadn't yeah. dunked in like two years <laughs> yeah yeah it's like so he was just playing so possum bad. for everyone oh he didn't want to be in detroit he never no. did no one does <laughs> no, no one ever they should just like move that franchise to like vancouver or seattle or something right or Kansas oh, God. City. Kansas City Seattle would be a great city for a basketball team. Just saying That's it, true. putting it out there. It's in the middle of the country. There's already like 10 other sports teams there. Just I mean, like uh, Oklahoma City getting one for absolutely no reason. <laughs> no, there's Whatever. No. But like Kansas City, for sure. Seattle yes. needs basketball back, for sure. Yeah, they have women's basketball, which is good. But like, I just need yeah. a bigger basketball culture, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, that, that city misses a big time. It's such a shame that it was just like yanked from them. Yeah. It'll come um, back. So you mentioned you're you have players you're into. What what are your like your players of the moment? Well, I, I'm a huge Dame fan. It's hard to not be a Dame fan. Yeah, exactly. I've been for years. And like I have his like trading card like in my garage. It's been just like sitting there for so long. I look at him every day, you know. He's like your guardian angel. Yeah, he's like <laughs> my guardian angel. But yeah, I, I love Gary Trent Jr. I think just because of the bubble last year, he was just mm -hmm. like the go-to. Um, I guess I just became a Portland fan in the last like couple of years. I think a lot of people have. Like, yeah. They just like, I feel like they're due. They're due for that that chip. There's, I don't know. They're just been building and building it. And Dame wants it. Like, he's so good. And yeah. CJ, we're going to just start talking about the Blazers, I guess. But <laughs> no, that's totally fine. It's, I, yeah. I, I had uh, Portugal the man on like a couple of times ago, and they are like the biggest Blazers fans ever. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. Um, I'm yeah. To and any other players? Other yeah i'm trying to think um I'm trying to, like i liked i like chris paul but i'm not a bit as big fan as chris paul anymore yeah i feel like i liked so you, him when he was in la years ago you you kind of i guess historically you've been a celtics fan though 
Yeah, I've been a Celtics fan. I like I like Tatum a lot. Brown, I think yeah. it's like he's hot and cold, but he gets yeah. gets a lot of shit. But yeah, Tatum's been fun to watch because he's just like he plays like Kobe. You're like he's literally like a mirror image of Kobe, but just like twenty years younger. And yeah, a lot of rest of the Wait, uh, crazy story about Kobe. Um, so uh, <laughs> the day that he died, it was like in the morning, and Noah was getting a tattoo. Yeah, like I got literally this. Literally in the time, this basketball hoop tattoo. Literally when he died, and I got oh out of God. the tattoo, and Alex texted me like, "Yo, like you know, LeBron." Said, you said LeBron killed Kobe, and that was actually the night before when LeBron passed him or something in right. scoring. Ooh. So, so like, I was like making a joke that was yeah. probably too soon, but yeah. I was like, "LOL, LeBron actually killed Kobe." And then Which, I was like, whatever, whatever. And then she was like, no, look on. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is, yeah. this is real. This isn't like some, you know. That's crazy. It's still hard to believe. It really is. It's just like, so I don't know. tragic. That was I like know. the beginning of like the downfall of 2020. That <laughs> and that, that yeah. was in January. Yeah, that Dude, was we like. We should have known it was going to be a yeah. really bad year. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your, what's your tattoo say? It just says swish under it. <laughs> I was awesome. like, I just wanted to get something kind of funny. So. Yeah. Very nice. Very like, nice. Yeah. I feel like I'm blanking on all the players. I'm like, I'm trying to think of like who, like what games I will like. You're watch. into Zion. I mean, everyone likes him. I'm I mean, like, yeah. I'm like, you know, Zion, I'm, I'm excited to see what he'll do. He's still he's so intriguing. Young. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, he's so big. And you're like, we haven't had a player like that in a while come into the league. Right. So I'm curious for that. I hate to say it, but like Lamella Ball has been kind of exciting to watch before he broke his wrist. I know he was really killing it, and he was a lock for a rookie of the year, and he still might be, honestly. But uh, yeah. yeah, he's done for the season. That sucks. Yeah, I guess, and like, I'm like, who would take it if he didn't play? Like Anthony Edwards is exciting. He dunks like his dunks are. Wild. Wiseman's been terrible. Wiseman's bad. Yeah, or he was injured too for a long time. Yeah. So yeah, I honestly, I it, it like I'm a Bulls fan, so like. Patrick Williams is good, but like not enough to like catch up Lamelo. No, he'd have to just like really turn it on. Yeah. Uh, but... Wait, I'm curious about how you guys would feel about um, the players that are in the sphere of pop culture that I think about, like who like Ben Simmons. Like yeah, I'm like, like what's the consensus on Ben Simmons? Actually, I think him and Kendall broke up, but just yeah, curious. Well, anyway. Shit. Uh, I, I am a Ben Simmons fan. Yeah. Uh, I. I don't know why he, he gets a lot of crap because he can't really shoot threes that well. And I'm like, uh, whatever. That's he's still I young think. and he's still going to get better. And he's just yeah. like, he's someone who can kind of do it all. Right. Like LeBron. I think he's actually like, like game wise, he's probably the most similar to LeBron there is. Yeah, I agree. They were saying that when he first came into the league too, he was like, this could be yeah. the next LeBron, but like he can't shoot. Like, yeah. Threes. Yeah. But you're like, well, he doesn't. LeBron have couldn't really shoot that well either coming into the yeah. league. No, but, he just like went to the basket and passed yeah. the ball a lot. <laughs> what about um? What about Devin Booker, who is Ooh, I mean, current BF? Love really? D Book. Yeah, D Book's like underrated. Well, he's just been on the, a bad team for so long. It's like he's had seventy point games. He's had like all these crazy games. He but, came out in the bubble, and people really saw him there. Yeah, uh, Chris Paul yeah, was good. like, "I'll go to the Suns." Sure. Yeah. yeah, you guys are pretty good. <laughs> right, right. Or Jay Crowder. Um, I always like Jay Crowder. You know, he's oh, yeah, yeah. around a lot. He's a, he's a good role player on the team, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a uh, good. what about Chris Humphreys? I mean, throwing Dude, it back. He's, oh. such <laughs> <gosh>. <laughs> he's the worst. I don't like as a person, I don't know. No how comment, he plays. no comment. Um, he was a Celtic for like a hot second, <laughs> yeah. He was on the Nets like, for a bit, yeah. I feel like these players, even like Tristan Thompson, like all these guys that are famous because of their celebrity, you know, girlfriends. I do feel like I wonder if they would even have the household name if it wasn't for the celebrity connect. Because, yeah. like, I remember talking to Noah about Tristan, and I was well, like, Tristan oh, has a so ring. Good. He has like some but, like, notoriety. Is he that good, or is he just mm. like on the team getting the ring, good. and then also with a celeb? You know? Right. Like he was like LeBron's dude. Like he was just like. Yeah. I'm I'm here to help LeBron, and it's yeah. so funny thinking like how close LeBron was to being on that show, but not actually being on the show. 
Oh my god! Yeah, Dude. he was like literally like, on the other like across the hall the whole time. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he probably was just like, I don't want any part of this. <laughs> like, I don't I want know, right? on this at all. Well, I mean, there's the idea of the Kardashian curse, where like you date a Kardashian and your career just tumbles and it's horrible. Like <laughs> Lamar, Chris Humphreys, like yeah, but Lamar them. already had his career before. Reggie too, Bush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, where are these men today? Are they thriving? No, not Lamar really. is not right. doing very good. Yeah. Chris no, Humphreys, no, who no. knows where he is? He's probably like an accountant now or something. Yeah, I feel like most of these people are out of the league. Like Tristan's yeah. still hanging in there. He's on the Celtics now, isn't he? Yeah, didn't he, did he get traded? No, Tice got traded. Tristan's right. Still Tice went to the Bulls. Yeah, you got him. <laughs> that's that's uh, Bulls. I'm very happy with the moves the Bulls made. In yeah. this in this trade deadline. So yeah, I'm, Zach I'm Levine's very excited. Good. He's you know he's they got Vucevic and that's huge. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, Orlando just like cleared house. They were like, yeah. fuck this, let's start. They're off. like, let's just get Cade Cunningham next year and call it a day. And, yeah. and yeah. I don't know. Have you watched March Madness at all? No, I'm not a big college basketball player or fan. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. The only reason I pay attention to college basketball is who's going to be in the draft next year. Right, right. I get that. Yeah, I kind of like the surprise at draft night and be like, I don't know who any of these kids are. And then I'll start kind of paying right. attention. But I guess, I uh, on the subject of celebrity, uh, there's another player I thought of, not really in that world. Blake Griffin didn't date anyone, did they? Did he? He dated Kendall for a minute, didn't he? But yeah, he dated Kendall. Kendall really just like has a Rolodex of these boys. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he's actually a, he's a really funny dude. Like yeah. he's, yeah, he, he can act. City. Yes, he's I hilarious. Love that he has his own like punk TV show that's coming out now. <laughs> Like, he seems like someone that like we would want to be friends with. He's roasted them. He did the roast of like Caitlyn Jenner that one time. Oh, he was. It was there. a little like I don't, I don't yeah. really like roasts, but he was there. He roasted. Wow. Caitlyn. When he was uh with the Clippers, he would do comedy shows randomly. Yeah. He would go to like improv comedy clubs and like do a set. Yeah. Damn. He's always been. What? I feel like he's gonna have a great career afterwards. Multi- I'm sure Definitely. he. Probably why he was bummed when he went to Detroit because he wasn't in LA anymore. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah. not a very fun place to live. Now he's yeah, I they just went to Brooklyn like last week or two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I work in advertising and I've always been trying to come up with ideas to get Blake Griffin into a commercial. Oh yeah, because <laughs> he would be so fun to work with. Yeah, oh he was God. in a lot of commercials. Yeah, but he was like in every Kia commercial. He did a Honda. Or, yeah, it was Kia, not Honda. Yeah, he dumped oh, over sure. the car like the first year or something. Classic. That's right. Yeah. Classic so, movie. For sure. He um, and stocks. <laughs> shit ton. So uh, I sent you, actually, before we get into that, um, how are you digging like the season thus far? I guess. Uh, I, you, I know you've been watching a lot of the Blazers games. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Celtics, how you're feeling about them. It's been a weird season for them. Yeah, it's been weird for them. Um, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of the Blazers games because they're fun. I feel like yeah. you never know what's going to happen. And, like, they always, like, either squeak out a win or they blow them out or they lose by, like, 50 points. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, the Celtics, like, I don't know. They just, like, seem like they just don't really care and right now or they want to figure it out, like, once they get to the playoffs. It's, like, inevitable. They're always yeah. making the playoffs because the East has never been that good. But yeah. Charlotte's been exciting. I think that, like, Devontae Graham, and like, t- yeah, he's like good. Terry Terry and um, who is the Bridges? Is that the other guy that's on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like they've been kind of fun to watch because I have a friend who's from Charlotte. And so I get to kind of like roast him when they do bad but then <laughs> praise him when they do good yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Um, but yeah, I think like I was skeptical about the like them even having the season this year. I know. I was kind of like, maybe let's just like just chill. Like let's have like a strike. Let's not like play at all. And then we'll come back and but I don't know. I'm happy it's happening. But yeah, of course. Yeah, because kind of like, like, I'm a baseball fan too, and it's like, uh, you know, like, and it's weird, especially now that they're talking about like fans being able to like go to some of the fans being able to go to the games, and I'm like, yeah. I I understand the logic. Like, it's open air most places, and it's right. big, so you can like space it out. But when you factor in like. 25 percent of forty thousand, like it's a lot of people no, a lot of people so yeah i feel like utah has been getting all this praise they're like yeah we have this new owner and we have like six thousand people here and you're like i don't think you should be telling people that <laughs> at all don't give them a number and you know and they're like spread out but it's still like you all have to come in at the same time and leave at the same time right like yeah. you're still, i don't know it's kind of weird meanwhile texas is the wild west so oh, it's, yeah they don't they don't really care about anything. yeah yeah 
yeah. it's it's wild. Yeah, Utah's um, been interesting though because they've been winning, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Donovan Mitchell's been exciting to watch, but I don't know if they're gonna do it. I I hope they do it just to yeah, prove yeah. to everyone that like, yo, like we're pretty good actually. <laughs> but I don't think they're Definitely. gonna. Win. It's it's funny because especially after the bubble last year with that whole playoff series between Denver and Utah, oh, I yeah, feel like fun. they're always like kind of paired together. And if right. I'm like, I want to like in my mind pick one, and I'm like, I don't know, I like Jokic, but I, I wish Donovan Mitchell could play with Jokic, and it's like oh, the best combo go. ever. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that series was crazy. Jamal yeah. Murray was just like on a tear, and it was just like back to back, but. Yeah, I feel you. I feel like they should just like join forces yeah. literally or in the same part of the country. Like let's put the the Southwest team all together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Um, so one thing I did is I, I emailed you guys some a little like game that sometimes we play is where we we take some players and we kind of what is the like band, like musician equivalent of these players? Uh, so I gave you a couple of players and, and we'll, we'll kind of compare our answers and it's always fun to like hearing the justifications for why you pick someone. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the first one, uh, we'll start with Larry Bird, all time, uh, great from the Celtics. Yeah. Well, that one was a hard one. And I, Alex kind of came up with one last night. It was like, la, la, la Larry Bird. I, it will make me think <laughs> like, of your la, page, la, la, la. like just the names together. Yeah. I will be honest. This is super embarrassing. I get Larry Bird and Birdman mixed up. So I was I like, mean, that's, that's okay. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Machine Gun Kelly, Birdman. They look, yeah. they've got the same like, like threatening white man with tattoos kind of aura so i think yeah. i might have to sit that one out <laughs> yeah larry bird is the complete opposite of yeah, larry, yeah. Bird. <laughs> larry bird was like he's a hoosier he's from indiana is he old school he's old yeah he, oh, yeah like against magic it was like him and magic in the 80s do we like him yeah he's just, yeah he's, kind of like he's like one of the best like three-point shooters of all time you know he wore the yeah. short shorts he had like the little blonde stash you know yeah. like yeah. wait let me look him up yeah get, get us <laughs> Look him up like think, not now. He had a cameo in Space Jam. Yeah, he had that cameo. He was he was a star. He's not looking too good right now in that picture. Yeah. Not, hold up. Is this is him? <laughs> You're like, yeah, he's he's old now. Time has not been kind. No. He kind of looks he like always him. kind of looked old though, if you look at him. Yeah. I guess also basketball players in the eighties are a lot different than now is this him in, he looks so old yeah in, that was like, probably on the end of his career that was yeah that was like at the end of his career but that's still in general that's pretty much what you're getting from him yeah yeah he was good you know he's giving me he holds a lot of records he's giving me like not steely dan vibe but like old <laughs> like someone who would play like yacht rock um like he kind of looks like like could be james taylor or something yeah yeah like <laughs> i think just maybe even a genre match of like Yacht Rock vibes. I don't know. What was yours? What, what's your Larry Bird Warren match? Yeah. I went with he like especially the young bird where he had that kind of like thin stash. Mm -hmm. I I was getting a really like folk music vibe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like and I just went with Iron and Wine just because I feel like he's yeah. like a very that's just his vibe. He gives yeah. me off like a like like a Father John Misty or like an Iron and Wine vibe, and it's just like he's like you know especially in the nba to be like such a dominant player as like this like very blonde white man i don't know it's just yeah. very interesting yeah he's like not he doesn't look like he'd be a basketball player oh he's yeah like all lanky skinny white guy with blonde hair he yeah. seems like yeah like someone's dad like got body swapped or something and now he's like <laughs> yeah. here yeah. i am some freaky friday shit. totally totally <laughs> um, all right uh the second player i had was jason tatum who you were just talking about yeah um i was trying to think of that too and i'm like i'm trying to like break down like every little like detail See i the know one who said he's the truth no that's paul pierce we didn't that's get paul pierce that. that was a uh, tough one yeah that one was hard too but i'm like you know i'm trying to think of like his name his son's name is deuce and i'm like who's someone that's like mm -hmm. um has deuce in their name or something or two I was gonna two say two gallants. Was that the name of that band? That is a band. That's yeah, like a <laughs> like a folk punk band. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit. That just threw me back there. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. He's, I don't know. I, I've been finding this like pretty hard to like pick up band. It definitely is. I, I feel like most of the time what people do is they find one thing and they're like, I'm running with it. This is like yeah. my, my straw man theory of what I'm going with. And that's what yeah. it is. What did you have? So for that one, I had, hear me out. Okay. <laughs> I said he's like third eye blind because okay. you know, he's good, mm -hmm. but somehow people still like underrate him like okay. third eye blind self-titled album is incredible and people know it's good but it's way better than you actually think it is <laughs> okay i like that I like so that. that's my theory yeah you know, that's like that's that's how kind of how i'm playing this one all right okay <laughs> i approve i approve of that i like that yeah mm -hmm. uh and then yeah. as you mentioned we have yeah. paul pierce the truth the who truth. is like the like all-time like go to well, lord. I thought it's, a... it's lord paul pierce is lord, <laughs> lord is, the truth. is the truth and i will you know? say she's um... got you know i'm just trying to get to like who's also like another artist that like went through a lot like paul pierce has been like was like stabbed like nine times and like played the next day or something like he's gone through so demi much shit. Lovato. Demi oh Lovato. yeah demi Lovato. she is the truth she, she is went to there. rehab yeah. yeah she has been through shit yeah and she is still out there thriving she is still doing her thing she's got this documentary about like yeah all of her traumas and Demi Lovato is the truth. She's been through <laughs> it and she's always been true to herself. She's never bullshitting people. She's always yeah. like, this is me. I am a flawed person. That's what people are like. And good one. I buy that. Lovato. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, for sure. See that that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you just <laughs> yeah. you find your thing, you stick to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, my pick for that one for Paul Pierce, which was tough, but I went based off his play style okay and he's like he's very you know he has a slow game you know he's not like super like athletic freaky like that uh right. it's a slow methodical kind of old school game mm -hmm. maybe not old school is not the right word he's kind of like sneaky good so in in the slow pace i said godspeed you black emperor okay <laughs> yeah you know he is he is a 20 minute song that's what he is yeah, he really is yeah it's it is like the yeah. whole game yeah it comes yeah to you know, he he was he made famous the uh, the move of pump faking and then drawing the foul for the free throw. Yeah, he was so good at doing that. It was yeah, it was great as a fan, but I'm sure annoying for everybody. Else. Oh yeah, or for the Bulls when during that whole like playoff. Oh, God. Run. That Bulls that Bulls Celtics series, I'll I'll never forget when Rondo pushed Kirk Heinrich into the scores table. Oh yeah, oh there was crazy. Just, there, didn't those like go to like double overtime like every night? Yeah, yeah that was that a great was, series. Like, the series of all time. <laughs> very good uh and then the last one is all-time legend bill russell yeah Dude. oh i said rat boys which is funny we talked about them so much because bill russell's got like all the rings he's like the dude and i feel like <laughs> rat boys in this last year has nailed it during the pandemic they've have their own tv show now hmm. they've got like they put a record out they're doing all this like good shit and like they're just like winning the pandemic rings. they've gotten all 11 rings they are bill russell of the pandemic that's 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 excellent that's a good they're that's also a like good point. ogs you know it's not yeah. like rap boys is a band that just popped up like no. this year and did great like they've been in it yeah. for so long and yeah. like so just like consistently just mm -hmm. holding it down just solid like yeah. they are, like they just are like unfuck with the ball and mm -hmm. i feel like yeah. bill russell is someone who is also unfuck with the ball yeah absolutely 100 yeah i remember I'm, I'm like i said i'm from chicago so i remember seeing rap boys and like you know a tiny i think it was called township at the time i think it's something different now but okay. just small venues yeah yeah that's 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 a solid pick consistent you know yeah yeah, yeah. holding it down holding it down always the goat <laughs> I, I went kind of a it's it's similar but in opposite direction and it actually there's a couple layers to it because bill russell's an all-timer and if i'm going like kind of like an indie rock all-timer it's the pixies who are oh, also yeah. from boston mm -hmm. oh there you go mm -hmm. yeah that's okay. that's so, good i like that that's kind of where i went with that one yeah nice i feel like the pixies are just like you know when you when you think of like kind of like the indie rock genre they're like hall of famers in that sense you know Literally, right yeah totally. they're kind of timeless they're all they're always be that there that's a good one yeah 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 this yeah. is it's I'm, I'm getting better at this every time i do it because it's like this yeah. is my fourth time doing this little game so it's, it's yeah it's been getting fun i'm, I'm learning of like the kind of subcategories you can do you can do like their play style you can just do yeah. their name where they're from it's great yeah i'm gonna start thinking like this all the time <laughs> like this 
I'm really getting like a, you know, a Gary Trent vibe from this oh band. <laughs> like, what's going on? You're just going to get endless emails from Noah being like, oh, I just have another <laughs> yeah. one. Like, I was like listening to Lord and I just like think yeah. that. Yeah style is like this guy yeah um, you know who taco fall sounds like <laughs> <laughs> yeah who would actually who would you pick for taco fall? i have no idea that's that's he's a tough such one. an interesting person and player he's so yeah. tall and his name's taco fall like everything mean? about him is just so I, cool like how tall is he though because like everyone is like he's so like, tall what, like seven, like seven six? six yeah that's look him up tall. look him up is that yeah. taller than who's the tallest yao ming like that's like yao ming height yeah but like the actually, he might be stuff. taller than Yao. I think Yao is seven two. Yeah, seven six is oh, Yao. Oh yeah, yeah, seven six. He's he's old. Yeah, is he yeah. still playing? No, no, no. He retired when he was like thirty. Yeah, he was having a lot of like, I feel like people who are that knee large, and ankle injuries and stuff. Yeah, their bodies are they can't like gotta be careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The gravity of the Earth is like not is like playing against them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Who are we, who's I gonna look up the height? Taco Fall. Taco Fall. Seven five. Seven five. Yeah. Just Close. Seven. Close. Still, yeah. that's quite tall. Yeah, I loved I, when Taco Fall came in because, like, any time that like Brad would put him to, the, to like the table, everybody would freak out. Before, like, oh my totally. god. Totally. Yeah, He'd I'm I'm six there. five, but yeah. compared to Taco Fall, that is not that's nothing. Six five. That's tall though. I know, and I, I recognize I am tall, but you know, when I look at T Taco Fall, he I, I would be looking up, which is crazy. yeah, yeah. Yeah, our friend um, was dating someone that was six ten, and I was like, "That's like Kevin Durant." Yeah, I'm like that's like, that's also another player that I'm like, I love Kevin Durant. Oh yeah, I think Kevin Durant is so good. If he didn't get hurt and tear his Achilles, they would have won that series. He would have got MVP that of that whole thing. Oh, he's so good. He's I also so think it's funny with Durant, like how people like look at like his his kind of off the court personality and like yeah. that he's got like the fake social media accounts and like all that stuff but it's so yeah, silly look up his stuff he's well, yeah i didn't know all this what's the, what's his there's thing? there's there was things posted online about him like commenting on posts about him but it's not his account and there was yeah. like one time he forgot to switch accounts yeah. <gasps> ah, I love that. That yeah, you should dive fucking, into it if yeah. anything it was like big as I say, not big dick energy, but like big <laughs> cool guy energy. Yeah. And yeah. I like it. Yeah, he's actually sure. filming a documentary in Richmond right now. Oh, nice. They've been like <laughs> filming like the Walking Dead and Kevin Durant documentary, and there's always <laughs> there's been just like blocked off streets. And they're well. merging together, and they're gonna yeah. do one. <laughs> Kevin Durant <laughs> is the Walking in Dead. The background of he's gonna have a cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is he? He was in Uncut Gems. Is that him? No, that's Kevin. That was Garnett. Garnett. AG, Garnett. Anything is possible. Kevin oh, I love, I love Kevin Garnett. I was actually thinking about this yesterday, and it's like, I think I don't think I'll ever be able to go back and look at that championship series without thinking, did he have the stone? Did he yeah. Have <laughs> yeah. Like it just like changed reality for me. Yeah. We were in the movies in the theater watching this, and Noah was like, "I know what happens. I know who wins. I yeah. know." And I was like, oh, yeah. "Shut the fuck." I was like, like, wait, 2012? Like, I started, like, clicking. I did, like, wasn't thinking about it until I was like, oh, shit, yeah, Miami wins this year. I'm like, I, yeah. I know it's going to happen. Um, right. But but she wouldn't let me tell her. I was like, I'll, <laughs> well, myself, I'll see how this game, though. Yeah. And wasn't that the year that made you love the Celtics? No, that was 2008 oh. when they won the thing. Yeah. They haven't won since then. I will, I will say, though, that movie stressed me out so much. Oh, my God. Dude, yeah. I was like, don't give him that rock. What are, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I thought that was great, though. And just having those cameos of being an NBA like fan, I was like. Yeah. Kind of, also, there was a. <laughs> like, you're going to give him, like, a lead role kind of in this as himself? I'm like, he was solid. He was great. Yeah. There was, there was a thing on Twitter a while ago where um, someone was talking about Uncut Gems. And it's like it's connection with basketball. And I I edited the intro. Like you guys have both seen it, yeah. yeah. There's the intro where it's pretty much going through his colon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I put I put the the like uh what is it called? The the ABC basketball theme song on top of it. Oh, you did nice. <laughs> and and, and awesome. the the Safety brothers retweeted it, and I'm like, this is the best thing of my life. Oh, oh my yeah. god, <laughs> that's, that's cool. amazing. That's awesome. It was Wait, hilarious, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, um, I really love that movie. Yeah. 
it's a, it's it's tough. I, I love the movie, but I'm like, I don't know if I could ever watch that again. Right, like I don't, you don't, have, see you it don't again. have to. No one ever has to watch it. But I'm it like, twice. if you know what's gonna happen, like maybe it's less stressful. I don't know. It's hard watching people make bad decisions. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How do you right. feel about the new uh space jam coming out? I am I am curious. Um I, I was pissed about Lola. I was like, give her her titties back. <laughs> <laughs> Come they on. want to sexualize a bunny, man. But Although they already did. You they don't. Did. Boobs are inherently sexual. I think it's yeah. really what we're all getting at. Is yeah. like, then don't sexualize her. But people have boobs. Yeah, you know, true. like. Yeah. Also, she uh, was hot. Yeah. <laughs> they also gave her like a shooting sleeve, as if that would help or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Dude, curious to what? see how that movie is and just kind of like how LeBron is and stuff like that. I think it's also you're going to want to compare the two and it's like, well, if the first one had like the squad, which is like the the, the five players in that were all awesome at the time, you know, you get Charles Barkley and yeah. honestly, did you hear about Sean Bradley recently? He got paralyzed? No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, that's, that's he was like the, the super tall dude and he got paralyzed in a bicycle accident. Oh, oh no. Pain um and that sucks yeah so but like but yeah i feel like we're always going to be inherently like comparing the two and and i don't like the cameos in the new one from what i've read are, are i'm not i'm not sure because i think wade's in it and yeah. westbrook not westbrook uh is lillard in it i honestly don't even remember because i think i remember oh, hearing yeah. a lot of people turned it down they're like i don't want to do it right what what literally what how could you turn that down if you're an nba player that's like your history you're like you're that's like the visual I blueprint know. i don't know maybe not maybe it's cheesy. i feel like it might be like a a lebron thing i feel like they're like oh you think you're good enough to like take jordan's place and like yeah, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know it might be something like that but you know what lebron's a good actor yeah he's, he's, he's solid funny. in train wreck i don't know if you've seen that yeah actually no, that was like the one. only redeeming part of that movie which i thought was <laughs> kind of horrible um but i was like wow lebron is like the he's little solid. buddy here huh. yeah um, i love just the the stick of him being like cheap despite yeah. being an nba player yeah. yeah i have a question though do you think like kind of off the idea of the new space Jam, like do you think other players like lebron like do you think he's like a like a beloved like leader of the of the league or do you think people kind of like roll their eyes at him thinking he's like the goat well lebron is like the kid in high school who's really good at everything and everybody wants to like be on his team but not i think everyone secretly is just like ah this kid's fucking annoying but if i'm on his team or i'm like in his like circle then we're cool that's kind yeah. of yeah yeah i don't i don't, it's it's hard to say because like i think everyone obviously everyone respects him everyone knows how good he is Right. But I, I feel like when it comes to like having the image of the NBA, I feel like some people are resentful about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's kind of like he's kind of cheesy and goofy. But when you think about it, too, it's like he's only ever like he's spent more time in his life in the NBA than he has like outside the NBA. Yeah. Now, which is um, wild to think about. And like, I don't know. It's just like at that point, like what is his real personal life? Because like yeah. all he's ever done has been an NBA player since he was like, 17 18 17 when he came into the league I'm like, yeah i like he is no oh, go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i wonder if you know he's like with every celebrity like if they're actually nice behind closed doors or if their head's so big because he's been like the greatest in the league for so long like is he humble and cool or is he kind of like i'm the shit and i like need you to know or i, I feel know. like he's humble enough i yeah. feel like uh i, I definitely i from what I understand, he is actually like, he is a good dude off the court. Like he does so much good stuff for like, True. like communities and, and all that stuff. He like started like scholarships and schools and all this yeah. stuff, which is like, he's a, a good person. Yeah. And I'm sure he's like, I'm sure he, it's a good balance of knowing how good he is mm -hmm. and being still humble enough, but yeah. not like not giving enough room to be like for people to walk on all over him or anything. Right. Totally. Right. That seems like the vibe he's putting out. Yeah. I was just curious if there was any underlying. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm sure there's probably some NBA players that like probably just think he's annoying because I'm sure. Probably, you know, so but I don't even know if it's because of like personality or just because like he's LeBron and he's the, like, yeah. the greatest. You gotta of, hate the best guy. Yeah. Because really yeah. like, you want to be in. Yeah. 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 There could also be a generational thing where like there's a lot of the younger guys are like, they're like, 
you know, it's like playing with Michael Jordan. It's like, it's right. mm-hmm. dude, you're the best. I can't believe I'm playing with you. Yeah. I always love watching those like first games of like, like Zion versus yeah. LeBron. And you're like, this has got to be so wild for Zion. I know. And you're like, you like literally watched him your entire life. And now you're yeah. literally standing like you could touch his face. <laughs> also, like, I just looked up LeBron as a Capricorn, um, oh. which is like kind of a classic. Yeah, what's no it like December 30th kind of, or something? I think 31st. Um, I'm not sure. But yeah. Um, I feel like Capricorn is a classic no bullshit kind of sign. They like mm-hmm. get shit done. They stay in their lane. They're like thriving. And like, I can imagine him. Like, you know, I was expecting him to maybe be like, if he's like a Leo or like an Aries, like something like fiery, he might be like kind of a dick. But I feel <laughs> He'd like- He'd be like, look out Russell Westbrook. What's his sign? Because he's fiery. He's all over the place. He's, he's in Washington. He's a, he's a Gemini. Is he? Oh my God. Dang. I have a feeling. I'm he's a, I'm a, I'm a threshold Gemini Taurus. You are? Yeah. Nice. He's a Scorpio, which Whoa. is also pretty spicy. Yeah, I'm married to a Scorpio, so I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Westbrook is one of those players that I'm just like, I, I think you're great. And then sometimes I just think you're just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I like I don't agree. know if I could be on your side. <laughs> totally agree. There was there was rumors that the Bulls were gonna go after Westbrook, and I'm like, that's both like exciting and I don't know. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's tough. Yeah, he's a t- he's a tough player to play with, I think. Yeah. But, but apparently the people he's played with in Washington have said nothing but good things to say about him, that he's been like a great leader. Yeah. Well, you know, they've been so bad for so long. I feel like they'll take anything. And- yeah, Def- definitely. Um, but all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining. It's been yeah, a lot of thanks fun. for having us. It's, fun. it's cool to be able to for talk sure. about basketball. Like something yeah. New. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but all right. Well, yeah. Thanks again for joining. And we'll we'll make sure I'll make sure to shout you guys out and then everyone listening, uh, go check out their album. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So thanks for listening. Yeah. yeah cool. Thanks. See guys. you guys. Bye. Bye.